And I guess maybe it's just because there's nowhere else to squirm. I don't know. Uh, their their thing is is not talking on ham radio. They're not they're not interested in getting in here and having a conversation. They just want to be the center of attention. Right. That's that's really what it's all about. Well, you really can't talk to them about anything. You can't talk to them about building an amplifier or, or antenna or anything like that. It's just continuous BS. Yeah. It's a scripted... I mean, I'm not kidding. You can see that tonight. It's just basically uh, scripted. And it's not even intelligent. Uh just grabbing a single word. It's about like watching the national news now. Let's grab one single word that somebody said, and we're going to make a whole news story on this one word. And maybe they get grumpy old hams on YouTube and make a nickel off of it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know where what the number of views you have to have is to make any money, but if you look at the views on those grumpy old ham videos, I don't think there's any way they're making any money doing it. No, they have ads on there. If you notice, every time you quit thing, they got some ads on them. Yeah. But they probably have to put up with a certain amount of it. Everybody wants to be famous nowadays. That's... I think that's a that's a sickness in this society. I don't know. Uh, RWA. Yeah, it's kind of well, good afternoon to you. Hope you're having a good evening. Just wasn't good enough. Uh, just wasn't quite there. 
I want to be guilty of all the stuff that I've been accused of. I might mess around and build a big amp myself one of these days. I, I think it would be great to appear in the ARRL. You know, busted amateur radio operator and Center Hill, Florida, 83-year-old <laughs> yeah. operating 8,000 watts on a four-element beam at up at 100 feet on 75 meters. I, that'd, be a, that'd be a great epitaph. Busting him for quirming, identified, you know, uh, uh, quirming, interrupting conversations. Well, you know, you could do like these CBs and just build you a four CX twenty thousand, and it wouldn't really take a whole lot to drive it. I mean, you could drive it fine with a hundred watts. Yeah. Well, I would. You know, if I ever took my ham license, that's what I'd do. I'd just go back to CB stuff. It's unregulated. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm far enough away. There's there's no way I'm going to interfere with anybody, so I could run whatever I wanted to and do whatever I wanted to on there. As long as you don't interfere with your neighbors, you're in good shape. Yeah. Well, I don't have any neighbors. That's me, too. I mean, nobody close enough. But that's, that's what all the guys down here that's gotten in any kind of trouble, the only trouble they got into is they were airing up uh, people's TVs and all that kind of stuff. They got the local authorities on them. The FCC doesn't do anything. So they'll go after, on occasion, they'll go after the guys that are, are building stuff. But hell, Ghost Rider's been building stuff for 30 years. They haven't done nothing to him. Yeah. And he probably makes pretty good, pretty good living doing it. Yeah, he, he makes pretty good money off of it. I mean, it's pretty much a ongoing thing on uh, on the bowl, you know, from coast to coast. It's a ghost. Well, there's some of those guys running a pair of four CX tens or fifteens or twenties. Well, that's what Swamp Weed down here uh, south of me is running. He's running a pair of 4CX uh, 15,000s, and he's got a, I don't know, some ungodly antenna up there with a 60-some foot boom on it. And believe it or not, there for a long time, he was pretty much top dog, but here lately, he's, there's been some guys uh, getting him as well, so I have no idea what they're running. That's no telling. The big problem that you got is you got to get the power to your house. I mean, if you start trying to run uh, uh, 40,000 watts and you do the math, you got to have a pretty good... A pretty good service coming into your house. Yeah, three phase. You get three phase. Yeah, you could do that. But I'm not sure how you do it. How you would go about doing that, really? I know a lot of those calling amps were three phase, but I don't know how they divided it up. I guess most of the low voltage stuff was a a single phase to neutral, and I well, I just don't know. The cool thing to do is just go out and buy yourself a piece of property that's already got commercial property. It's already got three phase running in there. Hell, I got three phase right out here in front of the house. I just have to get it in here. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a little bit more of a problem here. And you have to pay a basic fee every month. Well, it's uh, it's gone up quite a bit because back in the seventies when we were farming, they would run you three phase power in to run a three phase pump, you know, an irrigation pump. Yeah. And you could get a three phase motor that was like thirty or forty horsepower, and hell, it wasn't much bigger than a five gallon bucket. 
But it would pump water, what you're talking about, and they did not charge you a whole lot for that. But it has really gone up over the years to the point that most of the people that have got that service won't let them take it out, even though they don't use the pumps anymore. Because if I wanted they don't to do want to lose that, that you know, ability to, to have that service. Buy a piece of ground that's already got all that set up. Yeah. With me a big CP uh, set up on it. But yeah, I've always had three phase by the house. I, my whole life, we've always had three phase. What's out here? I can get. I let them set poles on my property, bring power in here, but back there where it taps on at, there is three phase available there. I, you know, I could probably do it cheaper, run three phase in here than than uh, than than it would cost me to run it underground, which which is what I'd really like to do. I'd rather than run. On, Three phase, I just see them wires damn down. Uh, that was the worst mistake I made. M4AH. WA4WAM. Four, four, yeah, I should have had them run that to damn stuff underground because those wires run right across the north of the property. Which isn't, it's not real bad, but like in the mornings when I'm talking to you guys, I have to. When the band starts going out, I have to start using the noise blanker, and if those guys are still talking on 3910, then it starts tearing things up. Well, I'm not sure about how that works. If you say you get a three-phase wall uh, uh, pole pig to use for your for your plate transformer. Ah, uh, what they did at the TV station, they just had three different pole pegs. Ah, uh, well, I guess you could do that. But how do you how do you build your rectifier? Yeah. I mean, there's a whole lot about that I don't know. Okay, babe. Uh, sorry, sorry, Randy. What was that? My wife was talking to me. Well, I'm just curious if you do use uh, three separate single phase pole pegs, then. You're yeah, going to have to build a rectifier to get uh, get that back down to one DC voltage to go to your, to your anode. That's basically kind of what they did at the transmitter. They, they had, uh, I think, three different rectifier stacks, and all that stuff ended up being paralleled together on the DC side. Well, if you're using 208, then uh, any any phase to neutral is going to be 120, so you can get your 120 that way. Yeah, what, they, what they did is they had a little, uh, basically a little lean-to shed built outside that was fenced in, and they had three pole pigs sitting there, and those things were fed with the three phase, and then, yeah, basically, I guess they moved up backwards, and high voltage uh, came through a uh, you know, high voltage uh, cable through a conduit into the rectifier stacks, and the rectifier stacks were in their own cage, you know, like with that expanded metal, or you, you know what I'm talking about with that stuff, like grating. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then off of that, then that came over and went into the transmitter, which you walked into the transmitter itself, and the filter caps. I mean, they were great big, huge feathers, too. <laughs> well, did they have the uh, pole pig still in the oil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah they all, they, that, and that, I think that's why they were outside the building, really. Yeah, just for size. Well, size, and then, yeah, something went wrong, you know, one of them things explode or something that was outside the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they had those big old uh, Lystron tubes 
which kind of looked like a Star Trek warp core. Yeah, they had piping and stuff going into it. Yeah, it was, uh, it was all water-cooled stuff. That thing was cool as hell because it, it put out a 25 kW carrier at... Uh, I forget what it was. It was UHF. So it was a 25 kW carrier at UHF. Good Lord. Yeah, and, and yeah, we had like six inch feed line, which was basically six inch copper pipe uh, with a uh, with Teflon disc in, and then a big I don't know three quarter inch whatever uh, another copper pipe that was a center conductor, and then there was a big bird line section in there. And then what you had hanging right there on the transmitter itself, by the transmitter was just what looked like a regular bird watt meter, but but it had this uh, cable that come off of the line section that fed into it instead of uh, going through the coax connectors. But anyway, it was, it was pretty cool. It was cool because that thing be... Yeah, you'd whip it on there and jump up there to 25 kW and just hang right there. It would move up and down a little bit. Uh, mostly what you'd have to look at is uh, like if there was a big sink pulse, the uh, power would go down a little bit and then because your, your, your video signal is amplitude modulated. But all the audio is frequency modulation. And then they had a collar burst transmission in there that was uh, three something megahertz. It was all included in the signal. It was pretty, it was really a lot of, it, it was a lot of fun. 3.5875 megahertz. Yep, yep, something like that, I remember. But I was a kid when I was doing that. I was in, and junior high school or whatever. I'm trying to think of that uh, website that sells a lot of CB stuff. I know they sell plate chokes and that kind of thing because I, I bought one from them, but they uh, they sell a lot of single-phase pole pigs, but they're taken out of the oil. Yeah, I've had a few of those. The only problem with those things is they don't have real good plate voltage. Uh, I mean, they, they've got the plate voltage sags kind of eat on them, but but they still work just fine. And the only reason they have them in the oil is, yeah, of course, is just to keep them cool because they're designed for continuous duty, duty, and you don't really need the oil for what we do. Yeah. That's what I had uh, when the SEC came in there at the house and busted me. Well, they didn't really bust me. That's why I got my hand. They gave me a choice. I hadn't been on the air, so they didn't really monitor me and have evidence against me. Just, just complaints. And they come up there, and I had this big old pole pig. Uh, basically, uh, you know, the amplifier was almost the same thing. You about walked into a you know, big old pole pig setting up on a desk. I didn't have any kids or anything at the time. And power supply feed my amplifier. And a pair of Kenwood 599 twins sitting there. And... Actually, I think the guy was rather impressed. Well, you know, back in the day, the uh, distribution voltage here was 7,200 volts. So you could take uh, just a regular pole pig and you could get 7,200 volts off of it. Well, you could take them and they get 7,200, uh, let's see, what, 7,200, uh, or 
was a Y connection. I can't remember the other connection. You probably remember.